Hello again, and welcome to the master's voice. I am celestial and you are welcome to this channel to old and new subscribers alike. You are very welcome. The Lord bless you today. This prophecy is the prophecy that I received the day after the one from September one. So this prophecy is dated September two, 2022, and it is continuing in the vein of something that God wants us to understand the word from the Lord before I put the camera on for this video is this. I want them to know that the time of the wicked has come. I want them to know that the end of the wicked has come. Not that it is near, but it is even now unfolding itself. I'm working out the account balance. I, the Lord Jesus am working out the, the payments of the righteous, the rewards of the righteous, but I shall no means overlook or pardon or excuse the guilty for repentance has been before you always. I said to you that the word of salvation is even now it is in your mouth and it is in your heart that all who will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe upon me in their heart, that one shall be saved. But God is saying that the wicked are only increasing in their wickedness. For the wicked know that I am merciful, says the Lord. The wicked know that I bear long with the sinner, but I shall bear with sin no more. Now, if you reach out your hand to sin swiftly and without mercy, my judgment will fall upon you and you will become a hissing to others. You will become a cautionary tale to those who see how swiftly you shall be taken away in your sin. And that is the word of the Lord. The time of the wicked is now. Righteous people, there is a blade in the earth. I have been warning you for years. Stay away from being the champion of those who want to play blood sports. Stay away from supporting people just because they are famous and you like them and you think they are not capable of evil. It simply means that you are asleep in the hour where God is bringing justice forth. If you stand in the path of that cutting blade, mind you, you will go down with the tears. Be warned. God is not mocked. When a man has sowed his evil and Jesus, the husband man, the vine dresser is coming after that one who has sowed evil seeds, stand yourself upon the rampart, close your mouth and watch and see what the Lord will say to you. Don't get out your pom-poms and start going rah-rah, wrongdoer, because you will join team wrongdoer. The way of the wicked is darkness and thorns, September 2, 2022. And the banner scripture is this, who has believed our message and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Isaiah 53 and verse 1. This prophecy was received on September 2, 2022, a very, very long download from God from 9 a.m. until 12, 11 a.m. So that was the entire morning. These are the Lord's words that I'm reading. Listen, please. I will only momentarily stop to give elucidation where it is necessary and as led by the Holy Spirit. I said to the people, meaning God speaking now to who? his people and to all people for God has opened up his fatherhood, his love, bringing people to be children to all men. It doesn't matter your background. It doesn't matter your ethnicity. It doesn't matter what country you're from. You can approach this God to be your father. I said to the people, you shall love me only, only me you shall serve, but they have turned away to worship and follow other gods. They have defiled themselves with false teachings. They have made their garments bloody with deceptive sacrifices. They have loved other gods and called on men to rule over them. Rule over us, false teacher. Speak to us, false prophet. We want to know what you have to say. By your words, we will be led. But let not the God of Israel speak to us. Here's the Lord's scripture. You shall fear, that is to keep holy, keep sacred and set apart among you, the Lord your God and serve him and only take your oaths in his name. You shall not go after other gods 
the gods of these people who are all around you. For the Lord your God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord your God will rouse against you and destroy you from the face of the earth. The false prophets will be removed one by one, all at once, suddenly like weeds plucked out of a garden. Carrie Ann Giddon will be removed, Lance Walno, Amanda Grace, and many of that kind. The Lord says that the flow of false prophecy is like a sewage outflow pipe that is releasing great defilement into the body of Christ. True things can no longer be distinguished from defiled things, and as a result, the people are languishing for lack of bread. This means, when you say people are languishing for lack of bread, this means that there is a visible famine of God's true words in the church. It means that it's getting harder and harder to find a church that is not preaching man-made doctrines. It's getting harder and harder to find a fellowship that is not mixing true with false, light with dark, evil with good. It's getting harder and harder to even find a simple Christian friend who, when you meet that Christian friend and you talk to them, you then begin to find that there's a lot of defilement in the ideas that they have about God. They believe in God, but they also believe in burning sage. They believe in God, but they also believe in fingers crossed for the universe to help them. They believe in God, but then they believe in man-made doctrines. They believe in God, but then they have a lot of SJW, social justice warrior beliefs, like we should just love everyone and love is love and we should be inclusive and we should widen the conversation and we should draw back and push back and draw in and blend. You meet these people, they say they're Christians, and yet as soon as they begin to speak, the things that are coming out of them, none of it is resting upon the premise of scripture. And as a result, the church has become this starving stick figure that loves false teaching, that heaps up teachers to to soothe their itching ears, and they do not endure sound doctrine anymore. They eat all kinds of things, and then they say, this is good food. So the Lord continued speaking. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, do not listen to the words of the false prophets who prophesy to you. They teach you vanity, which is emptiness, falsehood, and futility. They fill you with vain hopes. They speak a vision from their own mind and not from the mouth of the Lord. They are continually saying to those who despise me and who despise my word, the Lord has said, you will have peace And they say to everyone who walks after the stubbornness that is in his own mind and his own heart, no evil will come upon you. For who has stood in the counsel of the Lord that he should perceive and hear his word? Who has marked his word? Who has actually heard it? Behold, the tempest of the Lord has gone forth in wrath a whirling tempest, it will whirl and burst upon the heads of the wicked. The anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the thoughts and the intents of his mind and heart. In the latter days, you will consider and understand this perfectly. I did not send these false prophets, yet they ran. I did not speak to them, yet they prophesied. But if they had stood in my counsel, then they would have caused my people to hear my words. Then they would have turned my people from their evil way and brought them back from the evil of their doings. And this is in Jeremiah 23, where God has so many words that he speaks about false prophets. So here God is saying, don't listen to false prophecy as they're prophesying to you because they're teaching you vanity and emptiness. So what is vanity and emptiness? Perhaps you're out there, you have a habit of going to a channel that is teaching you actually nothing that is building your spiritual foundation. Now, if you're a Christian in these end times and you don't understanding that your every waking and sleeping moment, except perhaps when you're working for your employer or looking after your kids, spending time with your spouse, those things are best sowed to what? Strength your spiritual foundation. Why? Because I've always been saying here that when you see the things that will start happening in the earth, whether it is things of a natural dispensation,
dispensation, such as wars and rumors of wars, such as the food going away, food crisis leading to famine, and that then leads to atrocities that human commit against human, the money shaking, breaking, and then totally giving way into this online beast system wallet, or whether it's things from the spiritual angle, the increase of spiritual madness where people begin to commit more and more horrible crimes, or the appearance of pure demonic possession in people, and they start to do things that nobody can believe, or the coming of transhumanism, the coming of the men of old, the fallen, all these, these rainbow clouds and everything, and, and, and special um, strange sightings will finally touch down on terra firma, and we will be sharing space with things that we've only seen in the Steven Spielberg movies. Whether it's from the natural area or this other area, you will need a strong spiritual foundation to endure such things. So every single time that you go to your YouTube app, let me share with you for a second, because many people don't actually understand what a time waster, what a burden social media is, at least to some of us. This thing sucks relevant time from you building your natural life. But when you come to these apps, yes, and then you don't understanding that all the places you're clicking and all the things that you're bookmarking and heaping up as your teachers are teaching you vanity, emptiness, then what it means is in the time that you should be like the ant, storing up your goods for the future, not prepping your spiritual goods for the future, Instead of doing that, you are sitting in places that are teaching you emptiness, futility, and filling you with vain hope. Vain hope that they've calculated the right rapture this time. They had 72 videos that got it wrong and they keep deleting the video every time the date passes, but this time they added up the math just right and they know exactly when that date is and you continue to put your trust in what the Lord says is a vain hope. Apparently God in heaven, if you follow some of these people, the only thing God can ever prophesy about is Donald Trump. That's all the Holy Spirit can talk about. The time that Trump will come back and save America and make America great again. America on this channel, I have one chapter that you need to study. It is Isaiah chapter nine. It is Isaiah chapter nine, where God says that he judged a nation and the nation said to him, the bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with hewn stones. The sycamores were hacked down, but we will build up and raise up cedars. In other words, we have gone through some terrible times, but we're going to make America great again. Yeah, we took some hits, but we're going to build back better. This is a very dangerous position for a nation to be in, a nation where very few people actually like and seek the truth but they seek after those who will fill them with clouds of wind. In times of judgment, you cannot stand on wind. And so God says that people despise him and despise the word of the Lord. And many would say, how will we be done? So every time you follow a false prophet, that's exactly what you're doing. You're saying that you don't want to hear the truth. I even see people saying, I, I, I need to take a break. I'm going to go listen to Julie Green. And I'm like, well, Okay, be one who drinks pure water and then and goes and drinks sewage. That is your choice. This part of the prophecy, that part that I just read was called judgment of false prophets. So this part is called fall of the false, rise of the true. And God says that Carrie Ann Giddens will be removed from the internet. Just as she came in, she will go out. I will remove her because she cannot stop lying and, rem and misleading my people. She can't stop feeding them lies and corrupted bread, nails and thorns that are piercing their spirit, yet they keep sitting there listening to her and allowing themselves to be defiled by the witchcraft and the divination spirits that are all over her. You will witness the fall of her ministry, all who follow her. Now understand the Lord is not speaking to me, for I am not witnessing anything concerning this woman. This is the first person that God ever spoke to me and said, rebuke this person. She is the only person who has a video that is dedicated to her on this channel and how it pained me to make it because for me, this channel is a labor of love to the Lord Jesus Christ where his words come forth. 
This person steals the words of true prophets. Just a moment, please. She takes prophetic words from multiple sources. She has definitely stolen many of the prophecies that the Lord has given me. She uses the Master's Voice blog like a magazine. And you see, here is the trauma of this matter. It's not so much for me because I know who gave me the words that I'm speaking and I'm working my way through them methodically. She has even taken prophecies that the Lord has not yet given me to speak forth and put them in her video. And usually it's the sensationalized portion of the prophecy that will be talking about angels or something that is bound to capture the imaginations of people. And then when the Lord led me to speak about this, here was most of the response. Some of the people who were being misled by this person repented, but the majority of them felt this urge to stand up and defend. How do you know the videos were there before you? But I ask you people of God, here are some of the things that he gave me to ask you today. The Lord says, you call yourself people of God who know the scripture. When did you ever sit down with Carrie Ann Gidden to go through the scripture? When did she even open John 3, 16 to you to teach you a word from God's word? How can you say that you are spiritual people and you do not understand that the office of a prophet is one that is eternally married to the word? that must be able to speak the word with spiritual authority, that must be able to bring out unknown and unseen things. A prophet cannot go and read today's headline and then make a video and say, the most high said to me. A prophet is married to scripture. The prophet is marinated in the word of God, cannot get away with it for the language of God will be the speech of this word. Many of the times I have told master's voice people, whenever you are reading on the blog and you come to a large block of text, just try this. Take sentences from that text and run them through Google and it will pop up as a scripture. When God is talking to me, almost everything he is saying is a scripture. It's just that if I inserted every scripture, Then from four pages, you would be reading 10 pages if I made every sentence a notation of what he is saying. How can someone say that she is a prophet of God and she has no understanding of the word? She has no elocution of the word. She cannot bring forth the purpose of God behind the prophecies that she says he has given her. So he's constantly giving her prophecies, but for some reason he's forgetting to give her her purpose in this so she can run and tell that. Russia said this, but cannot tell you the Lord's purpose. Can say uh, America is Babylon, but then cannot go to Revelation 18 and break it down for you as to why America is Babylon. Have a care for your soul in these end times. God says that he will remove this woman. I have seen this woman fall. I have even seen Bishop Jake's fall. And I will speak of that later when I come to again the place that the Lord has mentioned him. The Lord is insistent upon the life of T.D. Jakes. I am telling you that God says on this YouTube, you will watch people die. God says that America, you will sit in astonishment because the vanguards, this means the true prophetic teaching evangelist, pastor, prophet, um, apostles that were called Generations before me, when I was eating porridge, they have failed in his, their commission. God says we will watch Africa, South America. I'm telling you, all of you who are tuning in to these various broadcasts, you know these people, you say these are men and women of God, you will watch them fall like edifices before you. But what is going to shock America is the fact that God can indeed remove and kill a faker on YouTube. Now that's a new thing even for me to hear. The fear of the Lord is upon my heart always. People come and listen to these words and then will want to operate at the ABC baby petty level. The two of you, the two of you, I ask you in the name of God, do you really think that at the end of time, some of you who are mothers of children, that you will stand before Yah and he will start to ask you about dirty scammers and you, you and zomzoms and the pudding Are you an adult or a child in these difficult end times? 
Do you have no care for the souls of the little children who are at your house, who are under your covering, men and women? You say you are of God and you have no perception, no discernment. You do not know when someone is pouring witchcraft, divination, and sugar into your tank, and you think that when the end times crank up, you're going to turn the engine on your soul, and what do you think is going to come out of you? But confusion, the very confusion that you have fed in. And then you think this is a me versus she competition because you actually don't know the difference between the truth and a lie. You cannot perceive it even if two flashlights were shown on them to help you tell the difference. God says this woman is using witchcraft and divination, that she's capturing the souls of people, that you can't hear truth, that you can't hear wisdom, because you are snared in a net. But the word of the Lord says that you who follow, you will see the fall. And that is all that I have to say. That is all that I can possibly devote to this. Because the Lord says that you saints that have been praying, he's heard your prayers and he's got things in motion. And the next prophecy that I will make, God willing, if there is grace, strength, and virtue to do so, I will continue. In that prophecy, I saw the Lord balancing the books in the kingdom. Christians, when the Lord is on the move, it is a fearsome thing. I tell you, it is a fearsome thing. I saw God balancing the books. And I, Miss Merciful Heart, was still trying to pray and the Lord shut me out. He shut out my prayer. I was still trying to pray for people. I was trying, still trying to get, you know, one or two fleas to jump off the back of the bull heifer. The Lord froze me out. And I was watching him and the books were balancing themselves. He wasn't doing a thing. I just saw books, 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 and they were balancing themselves. They were adding, they were subtracting. And as they were adding people to the kingdom, subtracting souls were going to their graves. Notice that this is the kind of mature meat I'm giving you here. I don't have time to use code words and say, observe the Holy Spirit flying in the background. I'm here to make sure that you don't die early. I am here to make sure you, Father, that you learn how to balance your time between that office job and making sure that you are teaching Micah and Jonah at your house, that you just didn't name your children Christian names, but you are filling your children with Christian truth so that those two boys don't grow up and become destroyers of girls, you will be judged for that, Dad. I'm speaking to you, Father, that you also pour into your wife, who is drained by raising those children and feeling like she's in that marriage alone. Wife, submit to your husband. Honor him as the priest and the chief in the head. I'm here to tell you things that are not games. God says, you saints that have been praying, he's heard it all. He says that people, we will see the biggest ministries falling in this season. The biggest ministries. So you think that these people have built for legacy, you are going to find out by the sex tapes that sometimes legacy is, is not being built in the right way. You can't be a person of predilections and then want to come and handle this gospel. That's like putting chocolate on your hands or poop and then sitting down to turn the pages of your gospel. God will not stand for that. He said to the righteous servants of God, he will shine a bright spotlight on them and he's going to reveal them to the whole world. God is going to give his hidden gems, these large ministries. So these people are not going to inherit these tainted ministries. What God means is that if there's only a certain amount of space in the earth for big ministries. And the big ministries are defiled and tainted full of stories. And so they're going to fall. And that big space, God is going to start to build new foundational ministries with hidden gems that will have bright spotlights shining on them that the whole world will see. He said they will have massive ministry platforms preaching the truth and doing great works. Miracles are coming back to this world. Miracles of healings, miracles of breakthroughs, M miracles, creative miracles. You will see empty eye sockets. It will be back with an eye like you see my eye. 
This is what God is going to do. Greater works than these shall you do, I said. So it will be for my faithful. The Lord says a sharp separation is coming. Sheep from goats, wheat from tares. I will sit the filthy ministries in silence and darkness. Scandals are coming for the heads of defiled houses. But to my servants who have been laboring in quiet obscurity, quiet anonymity, this is David content to raise the sheep, not knowing that inside him is a giant killer and a king. Nobody knew a giant killer and a king was inside a shepherd boy, but God knew. And when God was ready, he brought it out. He says, I say to those servants that have been working in quiet obscurity, lift your head. Your redemption draws nigh. People will hear of you at last, my faithful workers. People will recognize your service to the body of Christ. Pastor, you've been working with those 60 people. God's going to turn it into 600 and then 6,000 because your gift has proven fruitful. He has given you those 60 people. You have not lost any of them to premature death. Nobody's gone gay in the 15 years you've been doing that ministry. You've been struggling with a little bit of finances because you only had 60 people. He's going to make it 600 and then 6,000. Be as faithful as you were in the sheepfold when he gives you a bigger platform. God is saying to the messengers and the servants who have ruled well, you have stewarded your gifts well. He says, I will give you double honor, but the lamp of many faithless and wicked stewards are going to be put in darkness at this time. The scripture for the first part of double honor is 1 Timothy 5, 17. Let those elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and teaching. Did you hear that church? Even prophecy has to be rooted in the word and teaching. If someone cannot manifest or show you ability with the word and teaching, you're listening to a charlatan. You're listening to a rock star who needs music playing in the background to say, I hear, I hear the Lord say, I hear America, I hear Ghana, I hear South Africa, I hear God. Yeah, they're not hearing anything. They're actually just hearing their empty bellies that are speaking lies into your empty bellies. Two empty bellies going into the ditch. The scripture for those who will fall, and God says that they will be put into darkness, is this, Revelation 2 and 5. Remember, therefore, from whence you have fallen, repent and do the first works, or I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place. And then he says again, unless you repent. The next part of the prophecy is called John and Aventer Gray. And I will start off by saying what I said in the first prophecy when I mentioned this man. God said this man is not repented at all. This man has a stubborn core within him that is highly addicted to having his voice be heard, his face be seen. He loves the glitzy life and he did not repent. So here now are the Lord's words. John Gray did not repent. He cried to me for mercy, but he did not repent. And I will speak here of Hezekiah. When Isaiah told Hezekiah, you're going to die, Hezekiah did two things. He cried to God for mercy and he repented with tears. And God says of this man, he did cry for mercy, prayers for John Gray all over the internet, but did not repent. His wife, Aventer Gray, is a Jezebel of the highest order. This couple is already judged by the Lord, and people will see the judgment fall on them suddenly, exactly as it fell on Ananias and his lying wife, Sapphira. They will be a modern-day example of what it means to play with the temple of the Most High and play with the Holy Spirit of God in front of people. So as I said just a minute ago, much of what is done is done to the captivation of the watchers. It is not done to edify. It is not done to remonstrate. It is not done to teach. It is not done to exhort. It is not done to rebuke. Let me take all those words away. It's not done to snatch your soul from the lip of hell and place it on a safe and rocky outcrop underneath the arm and wing of the Lord. It's just done for views and likes and clicks. Prepare to meet your God. 
I will lay them low in a pit and let times pass over them. This is the word of the Lord. I'm sure that's easy to understand. The next part of the prophecy is called T.D. Jakes. T.D. Jakes is a homosexual and a pedophile. He has defiled minors. He has used boys willingly and against their will. He is brotherhood, fallen brotherhood, secret brotherhood. He will be exposed and the filth will hit the newspapers in every country where his name has ever been famous, where his touch has ever been felt. This is a worldwide scandal. To the extent that he defiled, meaning to the extent that he abused and defiled, especially the young ones, let him be defamed. That means let the name that he has left behind in the earth be utterly destroyed. This is the judgment of the watcher speaking in heaven against this man's name and legacy. He will not have any legacy left. God says before this man dies, he will not have any legacy left. He will die fighting for the last shreds of his dignity, dignity and legacy. He will die fighting. Listen, those of you who sit on the fence. He will die fighting not for the mercy of God to be restored to him. What a terrible thing it is to lose the love, the favor, and the mercy of God. He will not die fighting for mercy to come back to him. God says he will die fighting for his name that he values above God. That is the Lord's assessment of him. He will battle in court. He will battle the press. He will battle his accusers. He will battle unsuccessfully to suppress evidence in a court of law. He will fight and say that certain tapes, certain text messages should not be admitted into evidence. He will use money, power, clout, and influence, but to no avail, says the Lord, he will not protect his ministry and empire. God says that the potter's house will fall. The potter's house and everybody in it will fall. And every single piece of it, the Lord has been saying, will come out and be admitted into evidence. Prepare the way of the Lord for whatever has been done in darkness must come out, says the Most High of all flesh. I have given seats to men. I have given callings. I have given gifts. I have given them mentorship power. I have put my people under their care. Instead, they went to the dark side and they drank from the devil's cup. Yet I said, you cannot drink the cup of God and of devils. This is 1 Corinthians 10, 21 and 22. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Would we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? This is scripture. These false leaders have openly defiled themselves in the muck and the mire of the demonic kingdom. They are practicing wizards, people of God. If these people could come wearing capes and Dracula collars in front of our eyes to show their true affiliation, they would do so. But they know that we are sleepy. They know that we are unstudied, that we don't know a thing about what's going on in here. They know that we have not studied to show ourselves approved. As God said earlier, and as he will say again, the church loves lights, camera, action. So people love a church that's pulsing with energy, a church that's just bringing up these new and strange doctrines. And we think, you know, you know how we excuse it? God moves in mysterious ways. And then you go and you eat razor blades and glass. Listen to God. The church is blinded by witchcraft and magic in the extreme. Practicing wizards are on stage before my flock, but the people are too blind to see. And let me just add, even here on YouTube, Papa Smurf could start a prophetic channel and he would have 1 million subscribers in less than three months. People would say, have you seen this blue prophet? There's something about him. It must be his red hat and pants. Shame, church. For real. You don't even know the real thing when you see it because you think it has to tickle your flesh and be sensationalized to be the real thing. And here is the Lord's estimation. This is happening all over the world, wherever the church may be found. 
The people eat thorns, nails, and razor blades and call it good food. What a good word that was, they say. And yet they have blood dripping from their mouths because the mouths are being punctured by razor blades and nails and thorns. A powerful teaching, they say, yet their throats are cut. And not only that, their bodies are being used for rituals and sacrifices by the leaders. Church, you are bleeding out. You are compromised dead in your sins. Your teachers misled you, yes, but I will punish you because you are not keepers of the book. I will punish you because you let the shepherds defile you and lead you into perdition. Perdition is a state where you have gone too far away from the word of God and you cannot be restored. You're too full of error, you're too full of lies, and then you will fall with the slain. Dangerous place to be. There's a reason that the Antichrist is called the son of perdition. It means no matter how you pray for him and rub anointing oil on his head, he's not coming back. He's for the dark side. I will punish these leaders for their own sin, but I will surely punish whoever continues to follow their doctrines of error and compromise. Whoever is eating from the pig trough, when the leader is judged, your own personal judgment will be right behind them unless you repent. It's time to go to your YouTube playlist, do a prayer, and seriously begin to ask yourself, what am I heaping up upon my head for the day of judgment? You love lies. You traffic in lies personally. This is in your own life. You are not an honest person. So God says, how can you discern when a leader is dark, when a leader is compromised, when a leader is raising up dark wings of divination and witchcraft over you? You can't see what they're doing. You have no idea who they really are. And so you cry, heap it up, heap it up. It means give us more, tell us more, mislead us more, Freemason pastors. These men are deep in the brotherhood. You can even tell who is brand new to the brotherhood. And yet, if I mention it, people are like, he's my pastor. I got a testimony from him. You could get a testimony from a duck. As we say here in the United States, even a stopped clock is right twice a day, meaning that even the deepest, darkest warlock can drop a scripture or two that can act as a key to the problem you're going through on that day. It does not mean that you are receiving teaching from a clean and sanctioned source. Sanctioned means this is somebody that God has put his hand on and say, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. I sent him, I sent her, that's mine. You disappoint me. You don't know me. You don't care about the Bible. You just want to praise and worship men, but that's why I'm sending a sword to the nations. I will cut down the idols of men until there's nobody left. You won't even see the pedestal that the idol used to stand on. No matter the walks of life, political, entertainment, sport, religion, I will kick it over and then I will watch your faces as you mourn and bury your gods. I am coming with fire, with my eye on the wicked. Prepare the way of the Lord. And I will share here the vision that God gave me recently about T.T. Jakes because I shared in the first prophecy, the very first one that says no more false prophecy, a, a prophecy that I kept for over one year. Why did I keep it over a year? Because I saw in that prophecy that God was telling me even people on YouTube will die. You know, people, you don't think that a YouTube person can die. God says that you will see them die and then you will understand that judgment is real judgment. He says we will understand what is called the fear of the Lord. And so I said to the Lord at that time, Lord, when I was writing the prophecy finally on the blog, a year old, to come and make the video, I said, but God, you know how we are. You say this man will pass away, but then when this man passes away, he will be eulogized as a God. They will speak as if one of the angels himself has passed away. And just recently, God showed me the whole thing was in shades of blue, as if I was watching it through a blue screen. And I saw this man just like a ape. A, a, a huge statue, a huge, huge statue standing in the earth. And it was kicked over. And you would think that statues would fall on the earth where they are and maybe smash to pieces or something dramatic like that. This man was at the edge of a lake or a pond. The statue 
fell into the pond and when it entered the water, I saw that it had no clothes, so it was naked. And it began to disintegrate into ink and this dark blackish thing. And that ink began to poison the water. So the statue didn't fall on the earth and smashed. It fell into water and it began to dissolve into this blackish, inky substance. And this water became defiled. And I saw tons of animals coming out of the forest, coming and going from that pool. And this is what will happen. You will see it with your own eyes at his passing. Any video that he has that has 1.2 million views will jump to 102 million views. People will come and watch it back to increase the defilement in their hearts. God says when this man passes, he will be eulogized by the rest of the pastors until you yourself think that maybe it's Angel Michael who has come to his earthly end. T.D. Jakes is going down. Joyce Meyer, Creflo Dollar, Benny Hinn, and Jesse Duplantis they are already judged. Their judgment has been set by my own assessment of their terribly grave sins. The Lord says, there are many young men mocking me today. Preachers, they take up microphones when no one has appointed them and they speak these transformation doctrines that have no spirit in them and that have no word in them. And the Lord was saying, who gives the gifts? And he gave gifts to men. This is what the Bible says. Ephesians 4 and 8. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. God says, who gives the gifts? God says, who are my gifts? And he himself gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. How much scripture have we gone through so far tied in seamlessly with this prophecy? I alone call the ministers. I, Yah, alone know the true gifts, the true calls, the true chosen among men. If I have not called you, you cannot approach me. You cannot enter into my counsel to say, well, God has chosen me and I too am a gift to the body. I'm speaking of ministry offices here, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. These physical humans are also gifts given to edify men. Edification doesn't mean your flesh has to feel happy. Edification means that if you had a level one muscle, if you keep on with that word, you will find that you have a level four, a level five, and then a Popeye level 51 that just might help you in the day of the Nephilim. Who called you? Who appointed you as a gift to men? Why are you standing raised up like chess pieces before me? I will scatter false ministries. One by one, you will go down in flaming scandals that will echo across the world as people see you exposed for what you really are. You cannot mock God and live. You cannot escape the fiery hands of the ever living God. If you repent, your fall will be measured. If you repent, God is saying you won't fall and smash as hard. But if you continue to feed the sheep that I never gave you to feed, your fall will be great. You will make the news. You will make the blogs. You will be everywhere as a topic of shocked conversation and even gossip. People, you must fear this thing called Twitter. Twitter will take off your clothes from on you. I don't know what's going on there, but that is what God means when he says you will fall to gossip. Those little children on that place will not even leave your underpants on you when they are done sharing your sex tape, your infidelity, your secret love for your own kind. These are dangerous times. I shared in the other video that the Lord says, my child, this is a recording generation. Recording, recording. There's a camera even when you don't know. You will become a talking point, a sensationalized gossip headline 
the press will have a field day with you. Remember a recent prophecy. God says that CNN that never supports righteousness, CNN will be tearing down the unrighteous as if they're not the ones who usually support unrighteousness. Stephen Furtick and Bethel Church, you're the ones I'm talking to. You will fall publicly and it will be a great fall. You will become a byword and a hissing, which means you will be an object of shock scorn and ridicule for you have entered my holy temp temple and attempted to burn incense when nobody called you to do it now this is just a throwback to those two men in the old testament who moses was the chosen servant of god and moses was supposed to be burning the incense and then they came with incense and they said well we can burn it too and what happened is that fire came out of the incense burner and just set them on fire in front of all the people. Imagine this happening at a church service. You're not called to be a pastor and you just, <sighs> if that happened in these modern days, everybody would stop singing reckless love and go right back to singing, Oh, the blood of Jesus hymns. This is my judgment. It comes to you and all like you prepare the way of the Lord. This prophecy is very long. I will continue it in a part two momentarily. I am Celestial with the Master's Voice. God be with you and bless you. Thank you to all of you who support this ministry. You are appreciated and a blessing. I have explained that you have now multiplied out there and there's still only one of me, so I can no longer do individual thank yous, but I do thank you and may the Lord return your gift back to you. I will be back with part two of this prophecy that was received September the 2nd, 2022, the way of the wicked is darkness and thorns. Until I see you again, God bless you and goodbye.